Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members and guests. It is uh, June the 6th, 2022, and this is a regular Monday night meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. So welcome aboard. Uh, we have an image review tonight, but before we get to that, let's take a couple minutes to talk about upcoming events. Uh, next week, June the 13th, there is no meeting, okay? Uh, we've gone on a somewhat relaxed summer schedule. So we're not gonna you know, expect everybody to show up every Monday night. Uh, we're gonna take some Monday nights off. So no meeting next Monday night, but we do have a meeting the Monday after that, that's June the 20th. Uh, we're gonna do a member show and tell with our very own Mark Albano is gonna lead the, the discussion that night. Uh, so let me turn it over to Joe. He's going to talk a little bit about, about trips and uh, whatever else enters his mind. Um, we have a couple of trips coming up. Uh, uh, Gettysburg uh, Battlefield. Norbert, are you there? Can you give yes, us I am. Yes, I'm here, okay. Joe. Can you tell us about that? Uh, okay, here's what we're hoping for. What we're hoping for, a well, we're going to meet at four o'clock in the afternoon. And we're hoping for some sunshine and get some nice... Uh, light for, for sunsets on uh, Little Round Top and, uh, and Cemetery Ridge. Well, Norb, what's the date for that? That is June the 11th at 4, 4 p.m. And we're meeting on that Steinhardt, uh, 539 Steinhardt, alert, right across from the National Cemetery. This is going to be like a, a history, Civil War history and photo shoot. And Chris is going to kind of lead this with this. And he's got some spots he wants to take us to that, that he thinks are really great to, to shoot in the evening, towards evening. Yeah, that's great uh, to have him uh, leading the trip. Yeah, so Helping out. So hopefully uh, the weather is going to cooperate. I'm uh, hoping for that. And uh, anyway, uh, like I said, we're going to meet at 4 o'clock and we'll meet in that parking lot. We'll walk right across the street and go into the National Cemetery. And believe it or not, there's a story about this in the National Cemetery. That's where the Gettysburg Address was actually read, right there. So anyway, anyway, that's that's what we're going to do. Okay, that's this Saturday, this coming Saturday. Right. right. Very good. I got to get an email out about that. And the, um, uh, I think you said that uh, Chris and you were going to try and go into the evening time uh, yes. uh, for some, maybe even get some stars, Milky Way, if possible. But that's well, possibly, gonna, possibly. possibly, possibly. Yes. Yeah. We'll see what happens here. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. That's did I send an initial email out about that, Norb? I don't remember. Yeah, I did send some of them. Yeah. Did, did ever... I yeah, think I sent a couple photos, a couple pictures too. Okay. I think you. But should... I did. I don't know if you still. I think Dennis said that. Uh, we'll, we'll check. I'll, I'll check on that later on to see if we actually sent that to you. Okay. Okay. No, I'm, no, I'm sure I got it from you. The question I'm wondering is, did I send it out to everybody else? Oh, I see. Uh, so I'll double check that. And if, if I did not, I'll send it out. And even if, I'll send it out again as a reminder. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Absolutely. <laughs> and then on June 18th, we have a uh, trip to Hershey Gardens. And Elaine, do you want to tell us about that? Uh, for the fourth time, sure. Um, <laughs> we have canceled it three times before now. Um, hopefully the weather will cooperate this time um, and hopefully everything will be in bloom by that week. Um, right now, I understand that the roses are just in beautiful full bloom and are close to their peak. So, And I'm sure that they will still be in bloom then. They bloom throughout most of the summer once they start. Um, but hopefully the... Uh, annuals, summer annuals in the seasonal garden will also be very colorful. And there's always the butterfly house as well. Okay, great. I just looked at the AccuWeather for next Saturday. Um, and um, so it's, it's, um, it's not real, real good. Okay. Don't, 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 don't pay that. any attention. To okay, that. don't pay any attention <laughs> to that. We will not do that. Okay. Look good, I know, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, yeah, the then, butter, butterfly house offers a, a nice, uh, you know, other option there for that Hershey Garden Strip. Exactly. Because especially yeah. if you anybody wants to practice their macro skills. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we have a uh, the trips committee has a meeting on June sixteenth, and uh, so if anybody has any ideas, any hankerings of somewhere you like to go, somewhere you think would be a good venue for us please let us know, let me know, or Dennis know, and uh, 
we will put that into the hopper for discussion. We have a lot of ideas for trips coming up, but we need some input from you too, if you could provide some. And I think that is it. Uh, looking uh, longer range, July 9th on a Saturday, we have a trip to Lily Pond with um, Mike Donovan's leading that, but you'll get more information in the email on that one. That's uh, ready to go. Okay, that's it. Very good. Thanks, Joe. Okay, tonight we have an image review and uh, Chip Kane is going to lead the, the discussion for us. Uh, we have a theme. Of course, it's graceful, graceful. So Chip, if you want to share your, uh, your screen there to show the images and uh, you can give any intro that you think is appropriate, and we'll get this show on the road. Oh, Chip, you're, you're muted. I don't know how that happened. Yes, I was. Um, right. I did that myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no one to blame but me. Um, so, uh, yep, let me just get everything set up here. And I do have a couple of um, opening remarks. Let's see, share and enlarge that. Uh, why didn't that go full screen? There we go. Is everybody see full screen? Yes, sure can. looks good. Awesome. Okay. Uh, as you see, we have 11 images. It is not many. Um, I, I, I mentioned I have a little bit of an intro here. And, and part of that is um, we have this theme of graceful. That's all I was given. Um, I'm not sure whether you as photographers, whether that was expounded on, or you're just given the theme graceful and go with it. Uh, the 11 images will certainly show that uh, those 11 photographers interpreted the way they want. I thought they did a nice job. Um, there's a lot of variety for just 11 images. And so that at least showed some, uh, some thought processes going on with this. And when we're done, I'll have a couple of other comments I'd like to um, talk about for those, especially who didn't submit. But uh, I really want to thank those who did because I know themes uh, can hold people back. Uh, we have 11 photographers here who, who jumped right in and I'm glad they did. Uh, and I think you will be as well. And I think um, you, you might think, oh, I didn't think about that as graceful which was uh, another strong suit of these photos. So let's jump into the first one. May I take just a second to comment on, on uh, the graceful, on, on sure the things? Just a, an explanation, especially for the new folks. Uh, we intentionally do not expound or explain the themes because we want you as a creative to come up with your own interpretation. So you use your own thought process, your own ideas, maybe to be something that we never would have thought of. So we don't define the theme for members or the reviewer or the judge. Okay. Now let's take a look at the first one. Um, uh, a whole bunch of thoughts started running through my brain as you're saying that, Dennis. I, I mean, I think it's a great idea that you're choosing not to to confine it um, would be the term I'd use instead of define. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a good choice, I believe. So we have an image here, just resting. Um, a young lady who's on one of these hula hoops, obviously um, one of these acrobatic type um, presentations. And she's indeed giving this image of resting. Now, <laughs> we all know, um, if you rest, you'd probably fall off um, the hoop, uh, but she's doing a great job. I think the capture's um, done well. Uh, the girl herself, you're not seeing strains in her feet to hold herself steady that way. She's obviously got to put pressure both sides. So she's done well. The photographer, I think, has captured this um, in the way that it, it should be captured. It's kind of clear, close, so you can see the detail. Her hands are out there, very kind of comfortable. And that just goes along with this term of graceful. We've got a nice circle in there. The background is sort of 
blended out, and yet you have these three spotlights that aren't too harsh. Um, you can't help the fact that one of them is right there in the picture by her foot, one slightly, just barely into the right-hand side. It would have been nice that they weren't there, but um, I don't personally feel they detract too much, even though the one you get this blown out light. If you wanted to play with it, you could fool with that. Maybe the dark, um, if you can see my mouse, can you guys see my mouse? Yes. Okay, the dark spot um, object, whatever that is. Um, I, I would suggest playing with it, trying to take the, that out at least, um, but it's, it's not a big deal. Um, it's a nice capture and it's sharp everywhere it needs to be sharp. And so it, it does what it should do as a photograph. It grabs you, you look at it and you go, oh wow, I'd like to have seen that in person. That's how I felt. Um, you, you've heard me before talk about titles. I'm gonna mention this here. I think, and, and this isn't a reference specifically to just this title, um, and I'm using that word purposely, just. So she's just resting. Um, that takes away something. We often use that word just to minimize, but you don't wanna minimize this. She's resting or she's at rest or something to imply that. Not a huge deal, but I would encourage you if you're gonna use this somewhere, um, print it, uh, you know, put it up for exhibition, just lose the just at least. Uh, and I think that strengthens the title and just um, works better. Uh, I'd love to hear who the uh, photographer is and where they got this. Okay, let's do that. Let's hear from the photographer. Okay, let's see. Do we know who the photographer is? If you're on board, you'll need to unmute yourself. Okay, Rick, can you, uh, let's see, is Rick on board? Can you tell us who the photographer is? Yeah, it was George Ryan. I'm not sure if he's on. Okay, no, apparently not. All right, then we'll go to number two. Okay, uh, one more quick thing on this one that I Oops. forgot. I didn't even have a jot to note. Um, if, if you're taking any photo and you have this nice background, you just want to make sure these little specular highlights, you'd want to take those out. And that's a real quick and easy job, whether you use Photoshop or Lightroom or, or any other editing software, honestly. So I just wanted to get that in there before I forgot. Whispers. And obviously it's an abstract, it flows all over the place. And that's kind of what you would expect um, that word flowing with the term graceful. This one, um, I find the colors very pleasing. I think there's some very intriguing areas within the photo, but from the standpoint of looking at it as graceful, I actually find it fighting itself. Uh, in particular, this area in here sort of breaks up all the nice flows that come through. Everything sort of swoops up from the left up to the upper right. And, and that's a very nice flow. But then there's this inside there that fights the word graceful, as I mentioned. It also, now, now again, I understand everybody looks at things differently, but it feels like it fights the title as well. Whispers seems quiet, gentle. There's parts within this image that absolutely would fit with that. And then again, there's this um, loud piece right there. Um, I think when you're doing an intentional camera movement, which this one is, uh, movement 
of how you move the camera can dictate a lot about the results of the image. Uh, this one indicates to me that there was a nice flowing movement. And then at the, the end of my guess is this little jerk or something. And so you get that. There are things within the image I said I really like. And um, again, this is, I hate to tell a photographer what to do besides what they've done, um, like to add something especially. But I'm gonna do that here. Then you can consider this and play with it. If you, actually I would probably do it in two, two pieces. I might be, um, if, if I may here, let me, I want to go back in and get my square. Where's my square? It's not gonna, here we go. Okay, if you took something like this, just that section, and now mirror it on the left side the same way, and then you're gonna get a flowing more, my term again, more, more angelic kind of flow to it. Uh, it's just an option when you're playing with photos and you're obviously being creative, working on this, choosing to do the intentional camera movement and you have some beautiful colors in here. All the colors work very well together. So that's, that's kind of neat. So by doing this, you then have this flow, again, my words, angel wings coming out each side. You could do the same thing up, up here. Um, I wouldn't go too far in. I don't know what that looked like if you doubled it on the other side. Just some thoughts for that. Okay. I'll turn that off, there we go. Um, so I, I think there's potential here. I just not quite sure it fits graceful yet. Um, but I would like to hear the photographer, who the photographer was, what they did to get the image. Chip, that's mine, Mary. And hey, Mary. I, thank you so much for your input because I knew it needed something, but I like the bottom better myself and the left side better. And for some reason, I don't know why, I never thought of discarding the top right, you know? So <laughs> I, I, I love your input here. And it is actually a bouquet of flowers I received ah. about a year and a half ago. And I love the colors in it. And I just was playing with the camera and that's how I got this picture. But, but I'm gonna, I, I love the left side like you did, but I just included mm -hmm. the rest of it because it was part of the picture. I mean, I hit a wall, so. Thank you so much for right. your input. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. It is pretty colors. And now that you mentioned it to, uh, from flowers, a vase of flowers, they obviously put flowers together to complement each other. And you captured that for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Chip. You're welcome. Okay, let's come on. Oops, wrong way. All right, sailing into tranquility. And it, at first glance, absolutely, it's wide open. It, it is calm and it takes you from the foreground out to the back and you can kind of go, ah, this is nice. I want to be there. I want to see it. I actually want to be out on the boat. Um, there's a lot to like about this image. I like that it's black and white. I like that you've chosen to turn this more into a panoramic. Uh, I suspect you've cropped the top more than maybe the bottom, if at all the bottom, and to give that look. And so I think there's a lot. I think it absolutely can fit within that that term of graceful, uh, it, it just sort of flows very nice. There are a couple of things, actually maybe only one that uh, I think can make this just a little bit stronger. 
And if you'll allow me again to jump in here and oops, get to my square. And I really believe you can cut the left end off. There's no real um, anything there to keep our eye there or to add to the photo. You might be able to go over a little bit to the left that I've just done, just to balance the right side. I would say, don't worry about that chip being center. Worry about the light as a whole being the center. Off-centered a little uh, adds, people don't think about it, but it can add a little tension that we don't, we don't feel the tension, but it's there so it's not, super symmetrical, and it actually adds more interest um, subliminal, subliminally is how I would put that. But I really like this image. And, you know, title, it's fine. It works for what this is. So thank you to the photographer. And I'd love to know who that is. Uh, this is Joe Farrell, and that's my image. It was in British Columbia. Uh, we were going to the Great Bear Rainforest. There's very minimal population there. And mm. it's, a much, it's very much so a fishing uh, community. This is a, a really massive area with nothing in it. And the reason I submitted this, just for the comment that you made, because my normal reaction on a, an image like this would be to crop it down to the sides because there's nothing there. There is uh, empty space and why waste the space for that? But, I, but I, I did that and I didn't like it. And I said, because it, the feeling that I had there was the massive area. And it was like going into like, kind of scary actually where he was going I, I think anyways and uh, so I appreciate your comments on that and I like your idea of maybe um, not putting them in the center but like you said you cut, cut off the left hand side and I like that um, so I, well I have a, another question for you then Joe um the the I, that's something I didn't comment on was all the layering which I really like as well but there's this layer within the water on the foreground. Is that a boat that went by and left yes. awake? That, that was awake from another boat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I meant I wanted to mention about the layering, and that added some more structure to this image that I really like. Um, so nice. Okay. Well, thank you, Chip. I appreciate that. Welcome. Let's go to the next. Uh oh, I got to, there we go. Okay, looking for food. And w when we think of the word graceful, um, it's not hard to match it with butterflies, whether they're sitting still or moving, even in their flittering around, because they can move pretty quick and pretty quick and kind of zigzag a little bit, we still consider them very graceful. So I'm not surprised to see a butterfly here. I'm actually, um, I like this butterfly. It's, it, it's very attractive. Someone else is gonna have to tell me the type of butterfly. I don't have this one obviously floating around in my backyard. Uh, but um, so that being said, it matches, you know, it's up against this flower, the flower, covers a large piece of the image. And then there's the butterfly. And then we have this, um, give me a second here, I gotta, I, I gotta, does everybody else see a yellow dot here? Yes. Yes. I'm not sure how you get rid of that. Okay, it's not in the image. Um, so I'm gonna ignore it for the moment. Might be a hot pixel. Uh, it's possible, but I saw it. I think it has to do with my annotating, honestly, and it's a holdover, is what I believe. Um, it, 
It was but, on my image. It was on my image too, and I checked to see if if I had a white dot. <laughs> yeah, no, you no, you no. Know, we won't have to worry about it. I'll see if I can get it off next time I open the annotation piece. Um, uh, but beyond that, we've got the flower. We have the butterfly, and I actually do like the fact that this is closed off at the bottom. One, there's threes. Our mind, we've heard. A, a ton of times from a ton of reviewers and um, instructors that, you know, threes go well. This does fit that for me. And, and it flows from that upper left down to the bottom right. So the flow adds to the gracefulness, if you will. The flower, the flow of these petals, they're not just on each other. Um, it reminds me of a flower. The only time I've ever seen anything like this was a few years back. I was at the Phipps Conservati Conservatory in um, Pittsburgh. Uh, there was a, uh, a Chuh Dale Chihuly. He's a glass blower. His exhibition was just opening up there at the time. And I went and I saw a flower like this and it smelled just like cinnamon. Uh, so I'll be curious to hear from the photographer um, when we're done here. Again, this image is very nice. It colors nice. It's bright, um, with one exception that I'd like to see brighter. And that's actually just this little tip of the wing. I would like to see more separation between that and this edge of the leaf. And just to brighten it up. Everything else in this butterfly really has that brightness. And I know it, it's a darker piece of the wing, but I, I think it would be better to brighten it. Um, again, it's a nice image. Uh, I, because um, this is a PDF, I always hesitate when I think it's close and I'm not quite sure to mention this. So the photographer can tell me the truth of the actual image. Uh, it feels like there could, it could be a little sharper in some of this. Uh, I'm not sure here. The eye seems sharp enough. That's the most important. This is nice right in here. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's sharp enough, but I wondered if it's actually even sharper than what I'm seeing. Um, but I'd love to hear from the photographer where this was, how they captured it. And two, did they smell the flower? Hi, um, this is Marlene. Uh, I was at the Butterfly Atrium in Hershey. Mm. And I didn't smell the flower. <laughs> I didn't want to scare the butterfly. <laughs> That's true. You wouldn't want to. <laughs> and his the fur does look a little blurry to me, but I... I, I I put it in topaz and it's still, you know, that's the way it came out. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say it, it, you know, messes with the picture too much. I, I don't want to overemphasize that. Um, it was more a question because I think when you're looking at it and you're, now I'm looking at it on a 32 inch monitor right now. And I'm back. I've just stepped back, I'm maybe two and a half feet from the monitor. And it doesn't matter. It really does not matter. We get, you know, including me, sometimes I get too fixated on the, the sharp. But when you're standing back and looking at an image, you go to an art gallery and look at an image, we all walk, put our nose up to the paintings, the, the pho photograph. They're not designed for that in print. They're designed to step back and look at the whole. And looking at the whole, this is a very nice picture. And I didn't hear, was it Mary? Marlene. Marlene, okay. Very nice image, Marlene. Thank you. And thank you oh, for oh. giving me suggestions. Yeah, one more thing real quickly. Um, I almost forgot the title. Um, <laughs> it, it, that probably is exactly what it's doing. But again, when we're, especially when we're working with the theme, I would suggest trying to find something that would be more 
thematic to what the picture is meaning to be. Um, it, it's, it's a structural title. It fits for what it is um, at rest. Well, we had that already <laughs> with the girl in the hoop. Um, just a thought, if you're gonna use this for something else. I have trouble with the titles. We all do. Me too. <laughs> I was thinking, um, what's what's for dinner? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, smelling the flower. Uh, I don't know if butterflies smell or not, but okay. Oh, I don't want to overdo that. But thank you for the image. It was very nice. Thanks. Okay, graceful as a dragon. And th this is a lonely image. Uh, dragons, I think, are more graceful than dragonflies generally. But what a capture on this dragonfly. And, dude, I should have wrote, writ written it down. I had the actual name of this type of dragonfly. There's two blue dragonflies in Pennsylvania. This is one of them. You can identify it by the little black bars on the wing and the amber coloring near the base where it attaches. And I, the name's out of my brain, darn. Um, but one of the things that's unusual, to, normal to dragonflies, unusual to um, other types of flying things is their wings do not fold back. They normally are just straight out. And that's what struck me about this image at the very first. It's like these wings are all feel like they're all but forward. Now, I think it may well be because of a couple of things. Just the perspective. Two, this dragonfly may be getting ready to take off or just landing. And the photographer can help, help us all with the, whether I'm close or not. Uh, but so structurally, it's different than you expect for a drag dragonfly, or at least I do. I have a water garden or pond at my house, and I love watching the dragonflies come in and land, and the wings are straight out. Beyond that, the it's a nice capture for the dragonfly. The flower um, provides an anchor, and for this image with some beautiful pastel tones in the background that just provide the um, a very soft background. So there's a very um, strong differentiation between the image and the background, which is very nice um, to see. The dragonfly itself, uh, I don't know whether this was a crop to get in closer. It feels like the depth of field, and, and you don't have a lot of time to work with something like this, uh, could have been a little, just a little deeper without losing that soft background. Um, because it feels like some of it's not as sharp as I'd like. The back tail part I'm not as concerned about as right in here. It just doesn't, again, you can tell me whether I'm wrong or not. I love the flower here, it's sharp. If there was anything else to suggest, and this is very, very minor, I would love to see just a hair more of this flower. It feels sort of like when you cut someone off at the ankles um, or leave their elbow out. I just would like to have seen that more completed. But it's a, it, it's a beautiful image, no matter what. And title works, graceful as a dragon. Um, dragonflies may well be our only thing we can look at as a possible modern dragons. Uh, love to hear from the photographer. And again, where'd you capture it? Hi, Chip. This is Elaine Shook. That was in my backyard um, oh, on, oh, the edge, nice. on the edge of our koi pond. Um, that is a blue dasher dragonfly. Yes. Um, yeah. It's the smaller of the of the two blue ones that are common around here. The other one is the great blue skimmer, which we also get. Um, yeah. but this one is the dasher. Um, 
the title it was is actually quite a bit of irony built into that on my part um because <laughs> dragons neither dragons nor dragonflies are are typically very graceful in my opinion <laughs> but um <laughs> In flight, the dragonfly is not graceful. It's a very no. jerky, flitty flyer. But this particular position was graceful. And it was. lies the, the irony there. Um, I did take this with a mid-range telephoto lens. I had to stand quite a ways away from it um, so that it didn't fly away. It, yep. This was not just upon landing. He was actually sitting there for quite a while, but I didn't want to scare him, so I stood back and used the telephoto probably at about, I'm not sure, um, might have been 300 millimeters. Um, so the uh, it's not quite as sharp as I would have liked. Um, the depth of field is shallower than I could have gotten with a wider angle or a macro lens, but couldn't get sure. that close to them. Um, but thank you for your comments. It's still very nice. And is that a hosta, the flower? Yes, a hosta yeah. bud. And it actually, I did crop it. Um, Kind of tight intentionally because the hosta flower was very tall and lanky and mm -hmm. trying to incorporate more of it just I didn't like the it gave it more of a portrait look which I didn't like uh, right okay. um, and I I really would like to have that bottom bud in more focus as well so um, some very di disappointing aspects of this image but overall I I, I did like the dragonfly well, I think you should. It, I still think it's a very nice image, it? and I love the soft background. Thank you. Okay, let's leaping so fast and so high. I guess that's supposed to be like my my bottom buttons are cutting that off um, again here. So again, this idea of graceful. We, we don't often think of people. But we're going to see that again um, coming up. And I mean, unless we're talking about uh, dancers, ballet, that kind of thing, um, sports um, don't, at least for me, don't instantly hit that graceful area of my brain when I'm thinking about it. But I, 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 I like the image. Um, I like what you've done. You've taken that and, and obviously kind of copied it and changed it so you add a feel of movement to it to get it. And, you, and it's further back coming forward till they're fully in front of us on the left-hand side. So I, I think what you've done with the image is very good. You've done it well. And for how it is, I think it's great. Um, cropped as a square for it. Um, it doesn't need anything else. This is one time you can cut off just above the elbow and it works because he's coming into the image. You expect things like that. It fits the number threes again. And there's nothing else anchoring him. So this guy really is leaping high. And the indication of fast with those um, it's probably an official term for the for the streaming back here, but I, I don't have one in my brain. Uh, so I do like that part of it. And uh, from the standpoint of graceful, I think it's interpretive here. Uh, you know, I, I don't see it as much as graceful as I see it as just wow. Um, Any time I see these guys. <laughs> do anything on these skateboards that gets them more than an inch off the ground. I go, wow, because I can get about a quarter inch off. That's about it. <laughs> um, but I, I really like the image. I think it's a powerful image. Um, I love the fact that you created it too. Uh, some people um, step back from doing too much to an image. I think you did everything just right for this. Um, so I'd love to hear from the photographer. And, and, and again, where where this was, how you, where you were positioned to get that sky, or did you add it? From Mary Eileen Carson. 
this is a skateboarder I shot oh a few years ago, and and I always loved that position, particularly like he had his hands, the way he had uh -huh. his hands and everything, and so I've been playing with this in different ways, and um, at, at different times trying to do different things, and so I I, I tried it with this. This is basically a composite. It's four layers. The sky is one layer, um, bottom layer, and then the the first image on the right is a la second layer, then middle image, third layer, and then the clear image of him is the fourth layer. So it's a composite that I, that uh, from from a uh, skateboarder I, I shot. And yes, he, he was very good. He was very good. He was very good at getting good height and landing correctly without hurting himself. And um, hmm. and and so yeah, he was up and I was down more. And um, so I've been playing with this in different ways for a while now. And and I came up with this and decided to submit it. Well, I think you um, you succeeded in where you wanted to go. That's for sure. Uh, it's a very nice image. It strikes me as it it belongs uh, in an article on skateboarding or something. I think it it's strong enough that it would fit with them. Although they might want more and more realistic. I think they like to play around with their <laughs> photos as well. So thank you. This was nice. All right. Thank you. Graceful bow. Um, I did wonder at first uh, when I, I heard about the theme initially, I was, are we going to get swans? And so when this first came up, I go, oh, swans. They're not, they're geese. Um, but they are very swan like. Um, their poses are perfect. Um, you can imagine them uh, in a Disney animation where the bottom one's turned facing the other and they make that nice heart shape uh, because they're just so perfectly shaped, tying together that way. Uh, and the tonality of this image, the blues into the um, blue gray is, um, it's very pleasing. The graceful bow, the title works for me. And it's like, it's a nice capture. There's not too little space in the front, not too much in the back. Top and bottom work for me as well, spacing. So I think they're placed right. There are things that you don't have control over that um, happen. That one in particular I'm thinking, and that's, I, it would have been so lovely if, if this one hadn't been angled quite so sharply the rear towards the other that you could have had some separation. But that is such a minor thing. Um, and that's like a wish thing, not a complaint about the photo. Uh, it's very, very nice. Um, I think you succeeded very well. The title works and it absolutely is graceful in every way, not just their shapes, but colorings, the flow of the water. So um, thank you for sharing it. And I'd love to hear who this is, who is the photographer. Thanks, Chip. Uh, that's mine, Chuck Kilburn. Um, I did a lot of work on this one because the original was very gray looking and um, uh, kind of bland. So I did a lot of, a lot of basics in Lightroom, boosting um, the clarity and and um, shadows, exposure. And then I took it into Nick, Nick FX Pro, uh, Color, Color FX Pro and um, gave it that uh, vignette blur around the outside of it. Mm -hmm. and, and then I took it back into Lightroom and cropped it, uh, put a little darkening vignette around the edges and uh, did a lot of spot removal because there was a lot of little specks all over the water. So then, then the final touch was I pushed the blue temperature, very cool, 
uh, mm -hmm. to a, like a 4,000 in Lightroom. And I took Good the choice. tint tint to get a little purple in there because they're my two favorite colors, purple and blue. So I got the blue and the purple into the to the image the way I liked it. And, and then, uh, oh, it didn't have a catch in the eye. So I used some of the white from the oh, image. And I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I wrote a question down, did was the, the, the light in the eye added? Oh. Yeah. I brought a spot. <laughs> I took the reverse of a spot removal and added a spot from yep. the, from the back of the <laughs> whitest back that I could get just a couple pixels just to put a little right. touch. So okay. it, it's been modified extensively. <laughs> um, minor issues uh, since you brought a couple of it of, of them up. I don't think it's a big deal other than maybe the one that I spotted earlier and forgot. There's one spot here you can get rid of. <laughs> There's probably maybe, more than that. <laughs> well, maybe. I'm not going to look at it too close with a magnifying glass. The other thing is maybe take some of the blue out in here. Okay. Uh, very, very little. If you did, uh, you don't have to. Um, <laughs> I like what you've done. I, I love hearing that uh, photographers work their craft. Um, you've done a nice job, Jeff. Thank you, Chip. You're welcome. Evasive maneuver. Go Wildcats. Um, very, very sh nice, sharp photograph. It stands out in many ways. And we talked about this idea, or I did, of graceful and people. And and actually, people really can be graceful if they're captured in the right way. And a still photo can capture the grace within something that's moving very fast. And the photographer has done that here, I believe. There, there's a lot of things to me to like about this photograph. Uh, one, I love that it's a closed circle. That Yes, we know there's separation between this hand and this guy's thigh and the foot and the guy's knee. But from an image standpoint, it, it just adds some additional texture within it that there's something that it kind of helps anchor the eye into the photo by having that completion of a circle. And yet at, at the same time, it doesn't stop there. This leg is extending out. He's ready to go. The photographer has allowed this, um, this player the space to go. That is so important in and, and, and showing a movement through a photograph, and especially if you're wanting to imply grace. Uh, there's no grace if, if you cut him off like right here. He has nowhere to go. Our mind lets us see him flow by. The sun, um, it, you have to kind of look close. Uh, the sun is coming from the right side, coming in. It's sort of low sunset. The photographer has certainly enhanced that. Um, you see it's much brighter in here. And he's light in the face. It's turned away. You need that I would say maybe it's lightened just a hair too much because our minds tell us though, he's looking away from the sun and maybe not the first glance, but the second glance at a photo. And if you're not looking at glance or at photos three and four times, you're doing a disservice to the, to the photograph, I think. Um, but the second time for me, all of a sudden is like, oh, that face is really bright. So I would suggest toning it down. But at the same time, I love the fact that this player, both players actually, are clearly apart from the background. And we know depth of field and everything, but this one stands out. That gives you the feel of a 3D and that just, adds to the power of the image. Um, everything's 
especially you want the wildcats if, if you live in Mechanicsburg anyway. Um, you want them nice and sharp. I'm really glad that he is. Um, it, it's, it's a nice uh, photograph. It gives us a time and a place. We know this evening. We can see the background, but it's not obtrusive because it's so strong in the foreground here, uh, the subjects themselves. And my guess is, and maybe the photographer can tell us, I think this guy got away from that attempted at tackle. That's how I would put that. So I'd love to hear from the photographer. Oh, he absolutely did get away. Yes, yes. Thanks, uh, I'm Jim. pretty sure he did. <laughs> I, I appreciated your analysis. I, I never quite looked at, at the geometry of the, the hand and the legs that way. So, so I appreciate that. Uh, I may have unconsciously lightened the face of my grandson a little much because I wanted him to show up. Show up. Well, so. sure, if he's your grandson, you got to do it. The background was very bothersome, as you can imagine. So I took it into Photoshop and I separated the background from the foreground and blurred and darkened yeah. without trying to overdo it. Uh, so, yeah, this was a game uh, uh, at Carlisle, I think, last uh, August last September, and the light was just beautiful. It was a, a lovely evening yeah. for a game. So uh, yeah, and of, of course the fact that my my grandson's making the move, uh, you know, made it for me. So this Bad. this was the cover of the book that I put together for him, the photo book of the whole season. Oh, nice. <laughs> so thank it's you. It's a very strong image. It's very thank nice. You. Thank you. Yeah, it should get him a, a scholarship in college. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Full scholarship. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, we'll move on here. Lily mist. Um, yes, we often think of flowers, and we saw a flower with the um, butterfly. When it comes to graceful, flowers can often be that. So I'm not surprised to see flowers working within the image. In this one, it's the subject. It is the subject. And so Lily mist, um, I assume it's like to imply Lily in the mist. And I don't know if that's really raining. You're holding a hose um, or someone's holding the hose for you, but you just happen to capture it in the rain. Uh, or even, and I'll be honest with you, I, I kept playing with the idea, was the rain added? Um, but I see water pretty strongly on the plant and um, flower itself. So I think that the, the water I'm seeing coming down is real. Uh, placement wise within the image, um, this would be one I believe that would work as a square better. There's a lot of empty space that doesn't inform the picture in any way. There's nothing to there that says, hey, it's anchored in such and such place, doesn't give us a time or anything. So I would crop it and I wouldn't be afraid of the square. Um, we, we've seen that already used, I think, very well in here with the um, skateboarder. I think it would work here and make the picture stronger. It would stand out more. Uh, so you know, from that standpoint, I mean, the title works fine enough. Um, I would have probably put the word in, in there. Uh, but again, that's minor. When we're talking about the image, though, any photograph, and I know this is going to sound a little like hokey, but the image is the image. And so you want that image to stand out. And one of the ways you make it stand out is sharp. And this photo feels like it needs to be redone so you can, and, and you, sure, use a hose. You can redo this again. And maybe even choose the right kind of lighting that way as well. And just make sure you're spot on in the important places. This, it's hard unless your depth of field is deeper. Uh, but if you're gonna focus, you want to make sure at least these um, stamens, I believe, uh, this, this has another name, but these are the stamens and you want those to be sharp. 
you want her eye drawn into the flower, that is a big part of this flower, at least, um, as this image is shown from its perspective. Uh, so my, my only encouragement would be to try to redo it and just focus, especially if you're using a hose, you can set up the camera, use a back button focus or um, uh, live view actually, and get it focused in, do the hose. If you have a remote, then trigger it. And I think you'll get a very nice photo. I like what you've tried. Um, I would just encourage you to um, square it up at the very least. I'd love to hear who the photographer is and was it really rainy or did you use a hose? Okay, you'll need to unmute yourself if you're in the meeting. Uh, Rick, who's the photographer for this one? George Kirkwood, Kirksick. Oh, new member. Okay, I don't think George is with us this evening, unfortunately. Okay, let's go to number 10. Okay. Elegance. Um, the photo jumps out at you. The colors are right there. And kudos to the photographer. We all know reds can play havoc um, with because of oversaturation and not seeing the detail. I think this photographer has done a great job of allowing the reds to come through, reds, orange, golds, and yet, um, we still get to see all the texture in here and up in here. And, you know, honestly, even in here, really. Uh, so, you know, thank you for doing that so well. I think you have. I think it is um, an interesting thought uh, when you look at the theme, elegance, uh, harps, Soon as you see it, I might your mind might not have gone to hearts, but when you see it, you'll go, oh yeah, of course, hearts, they even represent elegance in a sense in their sound and their flow. So that part of the subject works as well. Um, I would love to, I, now this is a big harp, you're close. Uh, so it's hard to suggest this, but I'd love to see the completion of the top at least. Not as important for the bottom, but for the flow of the image, it needs to not go out. It needs to go up and come back down in towards the face. Uh, you know, but, but again, we don't always have those choices where we're at, uh, but if you if you have the space, I would add it back in actually, even though it would move this higher up away from um, the young lady's head. It, it's sharp every place it needs to be. Uh, when you look, um, I can see it's, it's sharp in here. Her face is clear. The one thing um, with the face in particular on this one and the photographer, you can, help clarify whether I'm right or not, but it feels like you've done some smoothing of the skin. I know that's a big deal for people to do, but if you're going to do that, I would say do the hands as well, but I think it's better to leave it more natural there. Um, it, it just, adds to it. Um, but structurally, the photo overall is good. Uh, maybe a little more space here and here, but barely, not much. And of course, the top. But I think you've grabbed the right. Um, I think the title works. I think the subject works for the theme. You've done an excellent job in, in color. In, in the reds and oranges. And so um, thank you for that. I'd love to hear uh, who the photographer is. Was this at a Renaissance fair or where? 
Yes, Chip, uh, that's mine, Norbert. Uh, yes, I it was on. It's fair. This was shot about eight eight years ago, believe it or not. And uh, we, I was walking along, and uh, and I had a, a medium telephoto one, and it was crowded. You know that Renaissance fair is like yes. unbelievable. You don't, and, you can't get back to get too far. And every time I was trying to get a shot, somebody would walk in front of her. Yep. And, and I don't know. I, I, the hands are what I really captured me was the hands. They're they're graceful. Harpists, their hands are. it's like now they're flowing. They're they're very elegant. That's that's kind of where I came up with the title. Yes, you're absolutely right. I, I did you clarity on the on the face and the skin. Uh, she had some blemishes. I thought were maybe I maybe overboard took too much out. You know, too much clarity possibly. And the and the background behind her was really <laughs> un unbelievable. I had to work on the background to get that sort of subdued in the back. But uh, outside of that, it was pretty much you know uh, what you see here. But yeah, you know, red red is a difficult color to work with. It sure red is. Goes out quickly, and it's it's tough to render it. So anyway, thanks for your comments, Chip. You're welcome. Okay, um, number eleven, deliverance. It's like this is another one you see it, and you go, oh, it just grabs the eye. The flow is the epitome of graceful. Uh, of all the photos, this one initially has the most grace in its initial impact. Uh, not to take anything away from the others, but this one just does that. It flows. Uh, still life. We've got this vase or vase, however you want to say it, with these um, uh, I don't know whether they're reeds or uh, palm palm strips like you get on a palm Sunday at some churches, uh, but it it absolutely works. The coloring, I love the fact that it is black, and then you've got the silvers, all the shades of gray to give you the silver and the whites. Um, it's it's a strong image. I, there, I can't say anything negative about this photo. It is a beautiful image. But I am going to talk about the title. I want to hear from the photographer. I am so baffled. I looked up definitions for deliverance. I looked up synonyms for deliverance. And I wasn't grasping the um, intention as it's coupled with this photograph, which is just very, very nice. Um, so I'd love to hear from the photographer um, how they did the photo. Did they dump the black, put it on a black background, then take the picture and this title? Hey, hey Chip, uh, Dave Marchetto. Hey, Dave. You know, I, um, I've heard of abstract photos, but this was really an abstract title. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, it's grass, it's, it's grass. And, you know, for what it's worth, I had seen that spiral on the left. Uh, you know, it's, you see it in nature, it's recurring. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it dawned on me, I took a class from Dennis and it's the Fibonacci spiral. It's mathematical. Dennis can give you the formula. Your eyes will glaze over like I did in his class. But that's what it is. <laughs> and I thought of putting a catch light in the swan's face, but no way would it, uh, you know, right, would, don't would do I, that. Would get away with that. <laughs> but, all right. you have a title. <laughs> Was there anything other than just being... An okay. All right, work, 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 work with me on this. <laughs> Instead of freedom or escape or reaching out or blossoming, it, it really struck me that the deliverance, something, you know, getting, getting freedom here was the way I saw the, the actual outgrowth, outburst, uh, escape okay. of the grass. So that's, that's how it became deliverance. Okay, well, it's always nice to get inside the mind of the dog. 
<laughs> so thank you for that. Chip, I have uh, one, one uh, you know, real big question for you. Sure. Um, on these specular highlights, do you have any other thoughts of tackling them? There's no blown out uh, area on this photo as far as I can tell. And I did have to work with the highlights quite a bit. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, you know, I might have done it differently or how I can kind of approach these specular <laughs> highlights. I'm just kind of curious your thoughts. Okay, sure. You're asking me, so I'll give you my answer. Don't touch it any more than you've done. <laughs> Plain and simple. I, I, I wouldn't be worried about the spots that might appear blown out. They, where they are, it, it works. We expect, our minds tell us, we expect reflection that in, those highlights imply that re reflection and i wouldn't touch it okay i think i think they they need to be there well thank you for that and and chip one more thing uh, you sure. talked about the aspect of of a square this is shoehorned into a square do you have any thoughts about it not being quite square or does the squareness speak to you <laughs> Okay, I have, I have a strong thought. Same answer. Don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> I think this framed out would be perfect. This is an image that needs printed and framed. Chip, would you if consider this to fall into the fine art category? Oh, I think this fits there. Yes. <laughs> can, can you expound on that? Uh, what, what differentiates an image for, as fine art as compared to not? Yeah, boy. Um, <laughs> you, you want me to talk for the other 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, well, you only have 11 wow. images. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I, you've caught me flat footed here. Um, on this, I, I, I can only say that generally speaking, and this one fits this kind of category, when you take an image and take it out of the expected realm, then it starts to find itself falling into the fine art category. That's, that's, the closest thing I will give you right now. Um, it, this one, I mean, it's a very concrete item. We know what it is. There's a vase there. Um, there's now, we now know it's grass, but it's apart from anything. It's, it is, this is one where the image is the image and you know, it, it's like if you had other stuff back there, it would it just wouldn't have worked. It's so simple. I, and I know I'm not giving you a, a super answer there, Dennis, but that's about as best I can do at the moment. Oh, I, I understand there isn't a simple answer to the question. I thought I'd pose it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a beautiful image, very graphic and uh, very yeah, it's beautifully sure designed. Thanks very um, much. Uh, beautifully Chip lit. Did you use, use your soft boxes to light that, Dave? Um, you know, uh, Dennis, uh, th this is natural lighting, um, which is really surprising because, you know, I always use the, uh, you know, the soft boxes. This came from, the light came from the left uh, on my window, and um, it was a real bear <laughs> to process because it was not even an, that I wanted it. But it's natural light, Dennis. Interesting. Thank you. OK, Chip, yeah. any uh, closing comments? Uh, I, yes, I do have <laughs> some. Um, and this is really for those who did not submit. Uh, I, and I wanted to save that to the end till you saw all the images that you were able to see. Uh, one, I'm hoping you were surprised by what you saw in the category of graceful. Uh, Dennis mentioned at the beginning that uh, it's intentional, that they're not defining it. Um, so don't 
confine yourself when you get a theme, whether it's graceful or not. There'll be other themes coming down the line. Um, think outside the box. I think if you look at these images again, go through them, you're going to see something like, oh, that's, I wouldn't have ever thought of something like that. Well, allow yourself some space and time for it. That would be the one thing. Two, I would challenge you as photographers, everyone, that when you get a thing, and, and graceful to me is, is a really good one uh, to consider this, but whatever the theme, go through not your photographs, Go through photographs of others. Go online, look at images, tons of images, and find what might fit that theme. Not to copy, but to challenge yourself and expand what you would consider to fit within a theme. And then also you're gonna get other ideas. You're gonna see something, wow, I really like that. Oh. I can do this and it might, you could put yours and the one that inspired the thought side by side and you would go, how'd you get there? Um, that's just your creativity doing that and taking the leap. But we need to see that other stuff to get there. Sometimes it's just like the, um, oh, word out of my brain. I, I won't even try, <laughs> um, but it's a spark. Uh, that's not the word I was looking for. But uh, so I would encourage everyone for future things. Lastly, one last thing. The images are submitted. They've been reviewed. That doesn't mean you can't still work on a photograph that meets this Thing. Don't stop. Don't forget. Keep working. Something new, if you're looking at, you're taking new photos, go, oh, can I do a one that fits graceful? Often with things, we look at what we've done um, because it's easier. But I would challenge you to look forward and see what you can create, even after the thing is done. That being said, I'm done. I'm done with that part. But that raises an interesting thought in my mind. I'm thinking maybe sometime we should have a back to back image reviews or an image review, then a competition with the same theme. Because by going yeah. through like graceful tonight, the people that didn't submit, you know, or even the people who did submit, get other thoughts about what they might have submitted. I don't know how many times after an image review, I've gone, ah, oh, I didn't submit anything. But now after seeing the images that people you know, presented, I think of all kinds of things that I should have entered. So we, we could have a backup session with the same theme, give people a second chance you know, to submit. Right. All right, we'll, we'll consider that. Okay, let's open it up. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments uh, other than you know, telling Chip what a great job he did? Any specific questions or comments for Chip, uh, please uh, unmute yourself and go ahead. You know, Chip, along that same line that you're talking about, I participate in a group on Facebook that's called Shot of the Day. And there is a theme 365 days of the year, a different one. That the interpretation of the thousands of members from around the world is amazing on every theme. I have no doubt of that. And that sounds like a great one to recommend everybody in the club. Yeah, it's, it's really a fun um, group of individuals. Um, very, everybody comments, everybody, there's no competition in it. It's, it's just pure fun and artistic. Yes, um, and I know that that flies in the face of one photographer that um, I, I think you guys have actually had him. Um, Cole Thompson talks about not looking at uh, other photographs. Yes. And I do think that works for him because he's very um, sure of what he's after. But uh, a lot of photographers aren't. So that's one reason to look, to be inspired. 
the other thing is that, um, again, not the word I'm looking for, but that kind of quantum leap from what you're seeing to what, oh, your mind goes, I can do. Uh, you know, um, you don't have to copy what someone else has done, but I think it's important to admire other work. I agree. It does inform us. It does inform us, but not to copy. It, it informs us to move forward. So, that being said. Chris, I, I, all right, Chip, I actually, actually agree with you about your, your fine art, what is fine art and how you described it. I, I think that's what it is. You're taking it from, from one realm to, the, to another realm. And, and that where you're, that's where you cross over the border. And that's where it becomes fine art. And Dave, this is one beautiful photograph. I, I would love to see this printed. Me too. Oh, thanks very much, Norbert. I appreciate that. Okay, other questions or comments for Chip? Chip, this has been very good, very uh, insightful. I uh, appreciate your comments. I, I think uh, uh, just a little bit of analysis. I, I, I think you're very specific in your comments, which can be very helpful. And I think you, you bring out some things that people probably haven't noticed or haven't thought about. And, and I think you've been critical enough to show people that there, there's room for improvement. So really appreciate your, your uh, critique. Any other questions or comments? Well, thanks for uh, Chip's review. Very, very thoughtful. Yeah, folks, as, as we have been, would you unmute yourselves, please? I'll give you a couple seconds here to do that. And uh, we're going to express our appreciation to Chip by giving him a nice round of applause. Uh, thanks, Thank Chip. You. Wow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Chip. That and a dollar will get you a cup of coffee. Yep. Uh, well, I'm very <laughs> humbled that um, you guys allow me to do this. I'm very pleased. I like to see the images. We, we appreciate your work. Okay. Uh, all right, guys, just a reminder, uh, no meeting next week, but this coming Saturday, uh, we have the uh, June 11th, the trip to the Gettysburg Battlefield. That'll be terrific, led with uh, uh, Norb and uh, Chris Heisey. And then the following uh, Saturday, June the 18th, uh, Hershey Gardens and the Butterfly House. So that'll be great. And then no meeting on the 13th. Next meeting will be June the 20th. We have member show and tell. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Thanks, Chip. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Chip. Oh, there's a George. George, you want to unmute yourself? He's uh, in the meeting here. Yeah, let's see if you'll unmute. I didn't see his name uh, on the, uh, the participants list. He might be busy doing something. What'd you think of that, Joe? I Go think let me, uh, let me stop the recording here first.